Hey guys, how's it going? I'm Court McGinley. Today I'm going to be talking to you guys about six ways to tell if you're colorblind. You might not know this, but colorblindness affects millions of people worldwide, and it comes in many different forms. However, red to green colorblindness is the most common. If a person has this form, then their red and green photopigments have more overlap than normal, making them unable to see certain colors. Starting at number six, take an online test. This is pretty much the quickest, easiest, and cheapest way to tell if you have a form of color vision deficiency. AKA tell if you're colorblind. I took this test online and my result came back as having normal color vision. Basically for this test they will show you a bunch of pictures of different colored numbers in a circle and you have to click which number you see. Based off of this they can tell if you have a form of colorblindness and which one it is. It's pretty interesting. So if you have some concerns about if you could be colorblind or if you just want to try it for fun then you can go to www.colorvisiontesting.com. At number five it's genetic. Now this isn't in all cases but usually this is a genetic condition that you will be born with. If your parents have red, green, or blue color blindness, then it will likely be passed down to you. The gene which is responsible for being colorblind is carried on the X chromosome, and that's the reason why more men are affected than women. It affects 1 in 12 men and only 1 in 200 women. And that's because males only have one X chromosome while females have two. In females, a functioning gene on only one X chromosome is enough to compensate for the loss on the other. If you do inherit this, then it can show up right when you're born, the beginning of your childhood, or it could appear as late as your early adult years. Number four, low attention span when coloring in worksheets. This one is aimed more towards children, but it's at this age, if not sooner, that most kids realize that they are in fact colorblind. If a child is having difficulty when it comes to coloring in their worksheets, then it could be for a number of reasons. It could be something as simple as the child is bored, or they're just letting their creativity fly and they're drawing in whatever colors they want. But if this becomes more of a constant thing, then it might be because they are frustrated. Number three, the inability to see shades or tones that are the same color. This is a common sign that you are colorblind. Like with the test I was talking about earlier, there are these circles that are one color and then a number is placed inside that's a different or the same color. Now if you can't distinguish the number, then there's a good chance that you are colorblind towards that pigment. And as a result, you are not going to be able to make out what the number is in the circle. Number two, you have difficulty distinguishing colors. So one of the first signs that you might be colorblind would be when you're younger and you're drawing a picture but use the wrong colors for an object. For example, drawing a dog as being green or drawing a river in the color purple. It's a big red flag if you're using dark colors inappropriately, but in your mind you're using the correct colors of the objects. Number one, problems identifying red or green crayons or colored pencils. As I mentioned before, not being able to see red and green comes along with the most common form of colorblindness. There is also a likely possibility that if you have this form, then you will have a hard time making out the correct color for purple or brown colored pencils or crowns, as they too have red and green in their composition. Well, there you have it. That's six ways to tell if you're colorblind. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you soon.